grab a glass, grab your favorite bottle Gotta sip it slow, yeah, yeah, that's the motto Get relaxed, no reason to trip It's the boy Brocky Man, whiskey and kicks We pour a glass, toss it up Air Max ones on my feet, throw them up uh, Get relaxed, no reason to trip It's the boy Brocky Man, whiskey and kicks Kicking game on drinks and libations Sipping on the slow, keeping with the patience Freeze on my feet, you know I stay racing Drinking straight up, ain't nobody chasing This boy Rocky, the Whiskey and Kick Show We are here at Chicken and Whiskey um, With my man Tony Burke What's happening? We're gonna make this thing work, baby What's going on, man? A lot of good things, man. A yeah. lot of good things, yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's the world has opened up for a lot of new opportunities. I've been watching. You know, <laughs> I've been seeing things. You know what I'm saying? I've been seeing things, y'all. So, um, man, let, let's get into it, man, because it's a lot to talk about. Um, but let's get into you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we we've been we've connected a, a few times, and um, but you know, when we just sipping whiskey and sitting out on the patio, I'm not like, yo, man, you know, you got any siblings? Right. <laughs> <laughs> where, 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 where are you from, man? So I'm originally from Cleveland. Oh, word! Yeah, I'm originally from Cleveland, um, and I moved here probably about 35 years ago, 36 years ago. Mm. You know, um, so I'm as much of a local to the DMV in terms of seeing it grow. You know, right. remembering like, especially remembering like 14th Street, remembering just kind of the old hoods and just what they were and what they are now. Uh, but originally, yeah, Midwest. Um, Midwest you, all day. You're a Browns fan? I, I'm all Cleveland, all DC. So okay. I hadn't had a lot to cheer about until recently. You know, with the Nats <laughs> In the cap, so yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> Indeed. And so, 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 you know, this is not part of the script, but once you say you're from Cleveland, I got some questions. So, what's the LeBron dynamic for you? <sighs> okay. All right, so it's kind of like it kind of went like this. All right, so so obviously you know you, you, we got him, and I'm like, yes, like Cleveland's on the map, like uh -huh. you know, ball game strong, and he left. And when he left, I was just like every other Cleveland fan. Like, anything I had, they had LBJ on, and I was like, get it out of here, and I'm done with it, don't. Right. And so like I just I had I just had that like that just that fire to see him not succeed in Miami, and then he raised the trophy. I was like. But I was quick to go ahead and embrace him back when he said he was coming back. I was like, you know what? All is forgiven. And then he won the title for us. I was like, my man. I was like, you know, we're, we're, we're all good. Go give me another we're jersey good. real quick. Exactly, exactly. I was just sitting there just on the phone. I was like, I got to get another one. I got another one. You brought y'all a chip, too. And that's, honestly, that's the most important part. And, and and I remember I was at home, and my wife my wife is from here. So okay. you know, she you know she didn't have to do with a lot of teams losing like I did with Cleveland, right? Mm -hmm. Not the heartaches. So when he brought us that title, like, I was sitting there. And I started kind of like shedding a little tears. My wife's like, it meant that much. I'm like, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah. one, he came back and he delivered on what he said he was going to do. Right. You know, and then the other one is just, it was just so good to see Cleveland get a title again. Right. We have emotional attachments to our team. Like, you mm -hmm. can't just all of a sudden wake up and say, you know what, I'm not, I'm no longer a Cleveland Browns fan or no longer a, a Cavaliers fan. No. Nah. It, it doesn't work that way. It's not. It's, 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 if you, if you do it and you invest in it, it's in your blood and that's just, that's it. That's, that's just it. it. So, yeah, that's, that's what's up. Um, so you left there. I mean, we're not gonna say when. You know, so you said you've been here for 36 years. I'm like, was guy like nine years old or something? You know? <laughs> maybe, maybe so. Well, siblings? Uh, no, no siblings. Okay, well. Yeah, yeah. So I'm the only child. So uh, growing up, I did kind of subscribe to some of those stereotypes, like the only child, like you know, like being spoiled or whatever. Like, yeah, I was. But it was, it was like, <laughs> it was kind of like you know, you were spoiled, but it was spoiled to the point where I understood where it came from, and understood that it wasn't expected. Uh huh. So my parents, my mother especially, did a really good job of giving me that balance. No, nope. you know, um, and really just kind of like carrying that out and staying humble when uh -huh. I needed to, you know, sometimes. <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta throw the swagger out there every night. So, um, so you came to, to DC mm -hmm. specifically, um, and you're like, you know, well, you're like how old? You're like in middle school, uh, elementary school. This was uh, this was elementary school. Okay, so yep. your schooling is pretty yeah. much a DC situation. Yeah, I did. Um, we moved here. We moved into Arlington first, and. And throughout my entire school and including college I think I did I think I did like nine or ten different schools oh word. and it was well because yeah because it was you know the schools I did in Cleveland then we moved here moved to Arlington then moved from Arlington out to Centerville um, and then I switched from public school to private school to public school just trying to find the right situation um, so yeah so I definitely I, I think my schooling career school asset career could be enough for like three people <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know we were I was just having this conversation last night by the nature of this area how you can 
can move around. It's not yeah. necessarily a negative thing. Mm -hmm. Typically, right, you see that someone's in the military, so they move around a lot. Their parents are in the military, so they move around a lot. Yeah. Or it's just like a, an unstable situation, so you move around a lot. But here, you know, you can access this, uh, have access to the same, you know, your regular lifestyle, and it's not no, no longer live in Arlington. Now you yeah. live in D.C. or you live in Alexandria, but you do have to change schools. Exactly. Because <laughs> they get real picky about the territory. Yeah. It's like you're on one side of the street, you can go to this school, but you're on this side of the street, you got to no, go to that school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you mentioned college. Where'd you Where'd you go? Yeah, so I went to Valley Forge Military College. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I went there for junior college. Um, and then after that, I went to Hampton. So Valley Forge Military College, does that give you some type of military obligation going there? No, but you had the option if you wanted to. Oh, so okay. it was, if, for me, you know, this is this is probably the wisest decision I ever made as an 18 year old, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm applying to colleges, I'm getting accepted left and right, and then this is kind of like, Valley Forge is kind of like a last minute option. Uh, my parents, they found it, they said, hey, we're gonna let you make the decision, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we think this could be something that's good for you. Cause like, look, I did okay in high school. I mean, I, I actually did pretty well, but I also realized too because I played a lot of sports so I skated by on a lot of stuff you know? uh -huh. just, just, <laughs> right. just just because I could right and um, I don't know what it was it was like, I don't know if it was a higher calling or what but at 18 years old I was like you know what I'm gonna go ahead and do this and, and go to Valley Forge um, and if I wanted to I could have come out and, and enlisted uh, you know with some experience already and it was also an opportunity I'll never forget at that time to my uh, you know my officer he tried to get me into the list he wanted me to go into the Marines and, mm. and I was just so I was so focused on just wanting to continue to graduate and move on, mm -hmm. I never did it. And every now and then I think about it, you know, but there was just so much I took away from that, from like structure, discipline. Yeah, you man, so, so you did have to partake in military activity when you were in school. I did, I did while I was during, there during school. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but there was no obligation to enlist like once we graduated. Dope, so then you said you uh, you left there, you went to Hampton, you Yep, said? so I graduated from there because of junior college and I went down to Hampton to finish. Dope, so what was your, um, where were you studying? So actually graphic design. Graphic, oh, yeah, word. graphic design with a minor in fine arts. Because I had, you know, growing up, my mother always put me into different uh, different arts, like schools and classes, and she really wanted me to kind of be well-rounded. So, and I took to it. I loved it. So, I originally wanted to do, uh, you know, corporate identity, advertising, marketing, you know, print, digital, the whole nine. And the fine art aspect of it was just something that I just always loved just growing up, mm. you know. So, whether it was just painting or just, you know, grabbing a piece of paper and just, like, looking at something and quickly sketching it down. And that was, it, it, what's funny about it, too, is, is I remember... I remember, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done down there and I'm like, okay, I was like, I can either move to New York, mm -hmm. right? Cause that's where a lot of the opportunities were, right. exactly. Or I can try to find something around here. And I was just so scared to just pack up and leave cause I had no connections in New York. I knew nobody, you know? So I, I never actually went and pursued that, but, mm -hmm. Throughout my career, that has actually come into play a lot more, you know, which is pretty interesting, oh, especially in this business. Yeah. Right. Well, it's with the creativity and then like the things that I had learned, I still could translate to this world. Right. You know? Right. Right. So you know, that's so I usually don't go here <laughs> until later in the interview, but I'm finding out things about you that I didn't know. I always had this this discussion with um my, my bartender friends, and I I argue with a few of them because they 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 oppose my opinion, but I'm thinking I'm telling them that craft cocktailing is an art it's an art dude like it's an art from the perspective of mixing certain ingredients together to get a result yeah and the yeah. presentation itself absolutely and, and it's i'll take it even a step further like it's the the hospitality in general is an art form it, it really is mm -hmm. uh, it really is because it's there's so many things that you learn about yourself when you dive into this world and especially mm -hmm. if you stick with it long enough like it's there's a certain amount of discipline there's a certain amount of humility and then of course like the creativity it's all encapsulated in hospitality and then of course you break it down it's like craft cocktails like absolutely it's an yeah. art it really yeah. is yeah, you can't tell me that this uh you know um uh, basil pear syrup <laughs> is the same as this vodka and cranberry. I don't no. want to hear it, dude. Uh -uh. That is art right there. Mm -mm. It takes a certain type of mind to even think to put these types of things together. Yeah. So I respect that a lot. Um, so you graduated Hampton and then you made your way back up? 
Yeah, so I came back up and then I did a bunch of different kind of jobs. So I actually, I'll backtrack. So this business has actually been in my family on both sides. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, my mother and my father. Uh, uncles were business owners, bar owners up in Pittsburgh. Uh, my grandfather on my mom's side, he actually used to be a numbers runner uh, oh, okay. back in the day. And so yeah. like I, this was always, always around me. So yeah, I knew yeah. at some point, even when I came back up here, I knew I was going to do it. I didn't know if it was going to be part time or what have you, but I knew it was going to be part of my life. And fast forward, here we are. Uh, uh -huh. you know? um, I actually remember the funny story. So the house that I grew up in, uh, in Cleveland, down in the basement, my grandfather used to work for the mayor of the city that we were in. Okay. So the basement was converted into a full operating bar. And he used to, easy, he baby. Used to, <laughs> he used to, I mean, it really, it really was. It, yeah. It, 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 it legit, like he used to, he used to entertain a bunch of like, you know, the mayor's political friends and he had all his friends down there. And I always remember he would be like, hey, look, and this is how I knew it was serious because they would call him by my full name, say Antonio. <laughs> I don't want you to come downstairs because I'm entertaining. And you can't tell that to a young kid what they're going to do. Come now I want to see. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember I would come down the steps and kind of like peek around. And then this, the basement bar, you know, was, again, this we're talking, we're talking, you know, in the late 70s and the 80s. So the front of the bar had like shag carpeting on the front bar as a design. <laughs> Big circle mirrors, Papa San chairs. I remember the eight tracks were going. I just remember all seeing. This all your it's, it's just seared in my brain. Right, I just right. remember seeing like a couple people smoking their cigarettes. And like my grandfather's behind the bar. And he's just, you know, he's pouring up his drinks and just and doing his thing. that is dope. You know, I, and that's. That right there, that's my first like true image and true experience of like hospitality, mm -hmm. you know, and didn't even know that it was going to bring me to where I am today. You that's know? crazy. All right. So, yeah, we're going to get there. I know that. I know you started <laughs> pouring some drinks at a, certain, at a certain point, but let's pour something, man. What do we, what do we have uh, up the Let's actually, first? so we're going to dive into uh, Catoctin Creek. This is actually our um, our private barrel. Okay, nice. Yeah, chicken whiskey. Yeah, this is our, I believe it's our third run. Each one we've done has been finished in different barrels. Um, the first one we did was finished in both maple syrup and uh, uh, yes, IPA as well. I love Catoctin Creek. Yes. They are doing a fantastic job with rye down there. They, they absolutely are. And especially now when you do, you know, your different barrel finishes and you can do, you know, the expressions that are, are unique to, you, to your establishment and mm -hmm. to your profile. So we had to, um, we had to cheer to something real quick, man. Cheers to your uh, your new dog Titan. <laughs> you know what? Thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. <laughs> new, Absolutely. I mean, he's 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 a he's a tank. He's a horse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We um we were giving oh, go. Wow. We were giving go. Yeah, that's yeah. I gotta take a minute because that's yeah. That's nice. Man. That'll work on a day like today. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, you got a new pup. Yeah, yeah, he um, it kind of just it kind of just happened that way. So I'm know. sorry, Tony. You said this was an IPA too. This one, this one was uh, maple syrup. Maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is interesting. Yeah, very nice. Mm. Very. I mean, it's it's. It's mellow, it's well-rounded, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's, we're not, we're not adding ice to it. So even at room temperature, like it's it's, it's not super spicy either, mm -hmm. like a, a rye, you know, but this is what, well, this is considered Virginia style rye, is it? Or is it, or, or no, does not, Virginia have a style of rye? Not, Maryland does. Maryland does. Virginia, not so much. Not so much. Um, but this is, this definitely goes along. Like you sit there and kind of like dig into a little bit more. There is some uh, play in here that's very, very reminiscent of what Catoctin Creek does, mm -hmm. and which is great. Great mm -hmm. flavor profile. Okay, sorry, sorry, mm -hmm. Titan. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Titan. The, <laughs> the, the whiskey got me going. So yeah, man, you, you got this new pup. Man, is your first time having a pet? Or you, did you grow up? No. So pet? yeah. So both my wife and I both grew up with dogs. I, I grew Word. up um, with German Shepherds, and my wife grew up with Huskies. So always okay. big dogs, dogs you could train. Um, and we were going to go on vacation, and we're like, look, let's go ahead and let's go to the shelter, and let's just let's see, like what have you. And so we go to the shelter. We had a couple other dogs that were picked out. And then they said, look, you have to meet uh, this dog Titan. Like he's a staff favorite, like clearly. So as soon as he comes in, like the first thing he does, he goes to our son. And I look at my wife, I'm like, that's it. Done. That's it. <laughs> Done. Like that's it. He that's chose it. you guys. You didn't choose him. Exactly. And so like, he's, he is, we were, they told us he was a Mastiff and a, a boxer mix. Okay. We think he's actually more boxer and Dane. Either way, he's mm. a tank. He's you know? so, how, how old is he? Four. Four, okay. Four. How, how much does he weigh? Uh, nah, he's 90, no, uh, 86 pounds. Nice, yeah, yeah, yeah buddy. 86 pounds, and I, I'm, I'm hoping he doesn't get any bigger, because if he does, <laughs> I don't know if I can handle that. Yeah, <laughs> I hear that, yo. <laughs> change your lifestyle man they, they impact your lifestyle mm -hmm. big time mm -hmm. and you know? it, it, it's and it's 
it almost kind of like completes like what we're you know at who we are as a family too because like we it, Titan and our son get along and Titan is perfect for our lifestyle right now because with me and my wife my wife's being a teacher okay. and our son goes to the same school that my wife teaches at. oh nice so like we're always in and out in and out and he just has that temperament he's like look just take me out I'll play for a little bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and sleep on the couch half the day I'm yeah, like, you, you yeah. belong here <laughs> yeah 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 so your son's the only child also yeah yeah that's, that's where he's gonna stay you have uh, any more you have any more we just we just got another one Titan <laughs> So that's 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 our addition to the Burke household. That's right a there. great answer, brother. That's a great, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great answer, man. So we are we are all good. So <laughs> let, let, let's bounce back a little bit, man. What's what's one of your fondest uh, childhood memories? I mean, besides the speakeasy, right? Yeah, in the shag carpet. Yep. Okay. Um, so this is, is it's not so much when I was super young. So this was already had moved. You know, was here in Virginia. Um, this was actually I was in my early twenties, as a matter of fact. I went back home. I used to, I would go home to Cleveland and go stay with my grandparents, uh -huh. um, and you know just just kick it and have some fun. And I never forget this one summer I went back, and you know my grandfather obviously like you know growing up like we had a really tighten their relationship okay right but we had never actually had the time to actually sit down and me just pick his brain like just tell me something talk, talk to me yeah man and yeah. they had and, and this is another one of those things where we i was there they had in their backyard they had a little uh like double swing set where he and my grandmother was kind of sit out there and so we just found ourselves like sitting out there and he goes into the garage um and he pulls out just a, a big old handle of the jack mm. and we just sat there and poured and sip and i was like i was like pops was like talk to me like just tell me, you know what I mean? And he started telling me things about when he was a kid and, and some of his experiences growing up. And then like we would just start talking about life in general, That's the whole sitting there and I looked down and that whiskey's just going and going, going. and going <laughs> and going. Um, but that right there was a, a really important moment for me because it just get, let me look a little bit more into his life. Yeah. Right? And the kind of the things that he went through that I never had a chance to, to, to talk to about, you know? Um, and it was everything that I ever could have asked for because then shortly after that he passed away. Wow. You know? Wow. Yeah, uh, that that was a smart move, man. I'm glad you did that. Yeah. I never did that. And and they, you know, we have rumors in my family like my dad had a twin brother or something and we never nothing never confirmed. No one knows a lot about my grandmother on my dad's side. It's really? one of those mystery mystery types of things. So it's dope yeah. that you reached out and, and, and got but I just wanna note that he had a handle of jack in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you know. He didn't even have to go into the house to the bar. He just, he just, he just had it in the, in the garage. So, so, the, so the garage, the house and the garage were separated, and the yard was kind of between the two. Um, but he was also really big into into barbecuing. You know, oh, okay. he, had, he had right there in front of the garage, he had this big oil drum that he had converted. But then when you open up the garage, he had these shelves, and, and the shelves were all, he would make his own brines. So he had like, this is the one that's the most ready, that one's the one that I just He's bought that life. Mm -hmm. That's dope. And so he had, and I'll never, I would always see like, either Jack, there was some doers in there as well, you know, and then he would have some E&J. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go, I don't, I don't have a garage, I don't live in a house, I live in a small apartment, but I'm gonna go home and take one of my bottles and just put it in my closet or something. Just I, they just ran this, put it somewhere, yeah, so it's like, right. you know what? And, <laughs> and, <clears throat> hit that whenever I feel like it. Exactly. Um, so, one thing I noticed about you, man, is that you always, well, no, let, me, let me not go there, we'll, we'll get there in a second. So, when did you start pouring? I started pouring in my early 20s. Okay. Uh, legally. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. right. Um, yeah, in, in my early 20s. Um, and it was, so remember I was I was saying when I got done with school, I was bouncing around different jobs. Um, at okay. one point right. I had uh, I had a government job uh, working for, for customs. Um, and at the same time, I was still part-time bartending. Uh, I used to work in um, the Fairfax County Public School System for okay. their after school program. Um, at the same time, still bartending. Yeah, you know, yeah. So no matter all the jobs I did, I was still bars in it and you know it was one of those moments and this is like it's almost like something you put it into a movie I'm sitting there and little in a cubicle I just worked a shift the night before I was working at Adams Morgan and it just I'm, I'm sitting here I'm just like I, I don't I don't like this like I'm looking around like this is not me and I'm thinking about like the, all the fun I had the night before and just kind of started thinking a little bit more like long term and like I put in my two weeks where I was like it's time for me to jump into this as a career, mm -hmm. as a career, and you know it was one of the best decisions I ever made, and I'll never look back. That's dope, man. <laughs> man. You know, it's, there's a lot of value. A lot of people don't understand. There's a lot of value in recognizing that moment at that younger age. 
You know what I'm saying? So yeah. recognizing that yeah. moment after you already have kids and you older and you got all these responsibilities, yeah. that two week notice take a little longer to put it in. <laughs> you know? What I mean? like, so that's dope that you recognize that at an yeah. early age and made that move. Okay, so that that that. So did you start off in a craft? Nope. You started off just no. So I actually drinks. yeah. So I actually I started off as a server, and I was a server for maybe four months. Um, owner comes to me and says, "Hey, we're thinking about uh, you know opening up the upstairs bar. Uh, do you want to go ahead and and run that uh, for a couple mm. of days a week?" I was like, "Great, yeah, let's do it." Um, and from there, like it was, I had the opportunity to work at a bunch of different style venues, you know, uh, dive bars, nightclubs, um, you know, really big established restaurants. Yeah. Uh, and it was through. All all those different experiences is where I kind of started learning, you know, do beer in a shot and then do a vodka soda. And then it was probably within the last, uh, the last like 10 years, mm -hmm. really a little bit more than 10 years that I really started to dig into not only just, you know, crafting like cocktails, but understanding like flavor profiles yeah. and like the balance and mm -hmm. just, uh, reading your, reading your room and reading your guests, you know, and being able to just kind of put something together for them. Right. Um, that's where it really exploded for me. And then of course that also led me down the path of whiskey, um, which was that was you know probably a little over like six years ago seven years ago mm. where it was one of those things i always enjoyed it yeah you know uh, but i never actually took the time to think about like well those whiskeys rums is vodkas is gins like which one's for me yeah you know yeah. and going back to my grandfather i was like you know what let me dive into this whiskey world a little bit more and see what it has to offer mm -hmm. and, and then from there it's just been full go this is a go time <laughs> Not a you know and that's a, that, being a bartender is one of those things like um you know I, I cut hair as a trade when i was a kid you know up into my 20s and 30s and maybe even later every time I go home to visit my family my dad's like hey man I need you to come edge me up real quick I'm like dude I don't cut hair anymore but being a bartender is one of those things you'll always be that yeah you'll always be that yep. I'll always be a barber I'll never Absolutely. lose that skill you know what I'm saying and the, the instinct and so on and so forth and you, you'll always have that as being you know say who you are you'll wear that for the rest of your life yeah that's kind of dope to me you know yeah. what I mean um, so, you know, what happens is that the whiskey gets, makes me jump ahead a little bit. So now let me get back to the point I was about to make. Um, you always have a smile on your face, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You always have a smile on your face. And what that prompted me to ask you is, you know, what's your approach? This is a very broad question, but mm -hmm. you can answer however you want. Your approach to life. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. there's something to be said about someone you always see smiling and always glowing like that. So, you know, what's, what's your approach to life? You know, if you have any mantra or anything of that nature. Uh, you know, there's there's a couple of things. So there's, there's two main ones. Um, the first one is, and this was going back to my grandfather who told my mother this when she was young. My mother would tell me this when I was young and I actually have a tattooed on my arm. Mm. It says, nothing comes to a sleeper but a dream. Mm. Right? And it was really just kind of going into like, look, if, if there are things you want to do and there are things you want to try to accomplish, like go for it. Mm -hmm. like, don't sit around and wait for it to happen and make it happen. Otherwise, you'll be stuck dreaming your entire life. Right. You know, uh, and so that's kind of that's that's the first avenue that I take is don't be afraid to really don't be afraid to fail as long as you learn from it. And move yes, forward. Um, don't be afraid to just kind of put yourself out there, you mm -hmm. know, with the ultimate goal, getting to where you want to be. Um, and then the second one is it's I like to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like I like to have have fun um, and I, I just I approach I approach life with enjoying every single moment realizing that it's it's not guaranteed to us but then also too like I have just kind of I don't know if it's through experiences or what have you my personality and the way I just approach people and just approach situations is you know don't overreact mm -hmm. you know don't overreact one way or the other because it clouds your judgment yeah you know if yeah. you can it, 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 as hard as it is you can just kind of Peel back for a second. And say, okay. Yeah. Let's 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 look at this. How how bad is it? How good is it? What can I learn from it? And move on. Um, but also, you know, the the greatest cure is laughter. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it really is. Yeah. You know. So yeah, I I like to laugh a lot. I like to smile a lot, and that's just kind of my approach. You know. Whis so, whiskey helps. Oh, dude, whiskey definitely helps. <laughs> oh, whiskey definitely helps. Absolutely. You know Absolutely. There's whiskey. a smile in every bottle. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A bunch of them. So what's your what's your whiskey choice, man? Uh, so it depends. Honestly, it depends on my mood. Right now, um, you know, with the weather starting to get a little, a little bit warmer, uh, excuse me, colder, I'm going into more like high proofs. You know, okay. uh, anything, anything above, you know, like a 102, you, you know, for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I do have a couple of the staples. Like if I'm going to do a cocktail, you know, one of my favorite ryes for like an old fashioned, which I'll make at home, is Rittenhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, I've Rittenhouse, heard that before yeah, too. Rittenhouse rye is a solid staple for me. Um, if I want to go more on the bourbon side and maybe do like a Manhattan, um, I do like Legion. Uh, of course, I love Angel's Envy, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I started getting into some of like the Bardstown series as well. Okay, uh, yes, sir. Yes, yeah. yeah. I love uh, those guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But here's something else is I also really, really enjoy scotch. I'm there I, with you, brother. I, I enjoy I'm scotch because I also enjoy cigars. So I am I am in the camp of if it's peaty and it's smoky and I can smell it from a mile away, put it in my glass. Put it in the glass. <laughs> I'm with you. Though. Shout out to those guys over at Arbeg and Glamorangi. Yes. They have, well, Glamorangi is not going on the peaty side, but still. Arbeg. Arbeg mm -hmm. is big time on the peaty side. Mm -hmm. And um, those guys, man, we we have a really good relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what's up, man. Um, let's break, and um, we're gonna come back and get into the, the thing you got going on, man. It's a lot. Oh yeah, it's, it's a lot. lot. So let's do that, man. All right, sounds good. Grab your favorite bottle. Gotta sit if it's slow. Yeah, yeah, that's the motto. Get relaxed, no reason to trip. It's the boy Brocky man, whiskey and kicks. We pour a glass, toss it up. Max pours on his feet, throw him up. Joined here by Chick on the Scene, the wine stress. She has some questions, but we'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> I don't think she's gonna sip any whiskey today. What? <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna sip on though, man? Let's, let's get this pour first, man. Let's and, do it. And talk, talk over a sip. Let's do it. So this one uh, we are gonna be getting soon here. Uh, this is 291 Colorado whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, this one I thought was perfect as we're starting in the football season. This one's finished with some uh, Aspen wood staves. Coming in as 126.8, Talking about before, but 291. I've had a chance to, to try some of the other expressions, absolutely delicious. I haven't had 291 yet. And so, what does um, what does Aspen Wood Stays bring into the game? It's gonna bring in a little from what I got from this, is it's a little bit of apple for okay. sure, uh, definitely. And it's a lot more Aspen mm -hmm. Woods, okay. Yeah, for me, for me, there's definitely some apple, there's definitely a little bit of cinnamon as well. Um, but also, too, with, with the high proof, it really bounces out, yeah, but it doesn't like it's not like whoa, you know right. What I mean? You smell it over there? Yes, I do. Ooh. I see. Man, oh, oh. Uh huh. Oh. Uh huh. Whoa, that is <laughs> crazy, dude. Yeah. It's yeah. funky. Funky and it's exactly. Mm, it's, fun it's, it's, it's funky with flavor. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, there's no but. That funky is a good thing for me. Mm -hmm. This is a funky. It has some attitude with it. Um, that proof is there. Yeah, yeah I, I, I get it, and, oh, yeah. I, and I love it. And so it 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 does. It just bounces around. You know it what does. I'm saying? Definitely. And Ooh. it's still, and it, it's, it's still like you know my pal right now is awake. It's like, okay, hello, how you doing? Um, but it's also kind of like I, I need to keep sipping. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that is beautiful. I love it. Um, 126 proof, right? Mm -hmm. 26.4. 26.8. Oh, 0.8. Nice. Yeah. That is nice in there. I always love their, um, their, you know, the labeling and stuff like that. I'm a bottle junkie. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they they put some effort into that. I love the way they did that. It's dope. Yeah. So we'll be we'll be getting this uh, getting this soon here for sure. I had an opportunity to uh, to meet some people behind the scenes. Okay. Um, you know, again through like social media and everything. Mm -hmm. and it's coming soon for sure. So let me ask you, man, how'd you uh, maneuver during COVID, man? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, there was a, there was a lot of lessons learned. Um, ultimately, came out came out well through the yeah. thick of it, right? Uh, from a business standpoint, there was a lot from a business standpoint in terms of navigation and interacting still with the public in a way that I'd never really jumped into before. Mm -hmm. Specifically from like the complete virtual world, right? It was that right there was it was almost like learning to bartend again. Yeah. Where it's like, how can I via a screen give you this experience like we're doing right now? Yeah. You know, and still connect and still kind of like you know give you something that you can feel like it's yours. Yeah. Um, learning that was was interesting and also I mean, i'll be honest with you the first part of covid i was telling somebody the other night i was like i had some probably my worst hangovers that first like month of covid because i'm like how i'm like how do i how do 
I sit here with a bunch of my friends on the screen and have a happy hour, and then and the next day I wake up and I'm looking, I'm just like, what happened? Dude, I'm <laughs> with what you, happened? Man. My, my birthday, the next day, I was like, what did I do last night in my living room? <laughs> I was like, well, I guess we're stuck at home for 22 hours. I guess I'm going to do it again. Like, you know, um, there was definitely some look. So, all right. So not only was, I, of course, I'm drinking through my whiskey, but then like there's a part of me that like, I call like trash Tony that came out. Right. So like, I'm taking like, I was like, I was like, how can I, I was like, how can I take like a white claw and make it like a premium cocktail experience? Like, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, it's quick run to the store, grab what we need, come back, lock the doors, you know, sanitize everything down. And I was like, all right, let's, I got, I got white claw and then I got some fresh mint and then I've got gin. I was like mixing around with it. I'm like, oh, all right, this is, I present to you. <laughs> It was definitely <laughs> like that, huh? exactly. There was definitely oh, there was no, definitely no. some uh, there was definitely some you know uh, experimentation uh, going on there. But um, you know, aside from that, yeah, from a business standpoint, it was definitely just the virtual world, and then just also too like I also started to kind of even take more of an interest in people, right? Okay. Because when you're like we're sitting here and we were open, like you know we're sitting here and talking, and engaged, but then like there's a, so much us other stuff going on from a sensory perspective, where it's like if I have somebody on the screen, it's just us, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so like learning more about just like the art of conversation and listening and because there were a lot of people that I talked to on that screen that they were in much much darker places yeah and so it was kind of like all right uh, you know I'm always hit me up whenever mm -hmm. I'll lend you my ear I won't even say anything you know um, but yeah there was definitely kind of just a, a big 360 from virtual to interaction you know to virtual interaction to just understanding people um, and I think from that standpoint, I think I actually came out better from an understanding of engagement with folks in person. Yeah. Because then, like, once we started to be able to do that again, it was kind of just like, whew, yeah. like okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good perspective, man. Like, sharpening, you really sharpen some skills. You had to get creative. Yeah. Yeah. You had to get creative. I pivoted early. I was like, well, you know, I can't go anywhere, so I still want to talk to people. Mm -hmm. Here I am on, on Instagram and whatnot. Yeah. I never got into the, um, like, the sourdough bread craze. Like I know everybody was making sourdough breads, getting like the starters and everything. Oh, and, and not look, me either. I didn't they know look that was so good. I did take on. I, I did start learning some other like methods of cooking because again, like you're home for it. I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna, uh, you know, figure out how to do this dish or that dish or how can I perfect it. I will tell you actually, from a culinary perspective, my marinara sauce went from here and just jumped. Here. <laughs> like it is now perfected. 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 This is like run after run after run. I was like, so we are good. The Burke household never has to buy store bought <laughs> sauce ever again. <laughs> I can dig it, yo. I mean, you got time and opportunity, so mm -hmm. you gotta take advantage of it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, man, so you know, you 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 gone through some changes and whatnot. But so, what can you say about your day? You were you were the Angels Envy brand ambassador. Was it for the for the Eastern region or just for this? Just for, for the Southeast. Maryland? So it was like the DMV down to Florida. Okay, boom. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Just <laughs> just that. Just that. Right. So, um, what can you say about your timeline with Angels Envy? It was one of the greatest experiences I ever had, mm. period, point blank, down from, of course, the quality of the, of the juice, but then the people involved, mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, the Henderson family, all the other, uh, you know, people who were in, in the Angels Envy family from a brand ambassador standpoint, all the way up to leadership. Yeah. Uh, it was a hell of a run and it was something I'm just like that. It happened for a reason. I'm so glad that it did, Yeah. you know, and now it really kind of just gave me more of a love and appreciation for that brand specifically. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, because I know the people who were behind it now. Yeah, you know, uh, but it was great. It, it was it was it was a great run. And, and uh, as a matter of fact, you know, when and we'll probably get into this maybe a little bit later. But when I opened this place up, I was still with Angel Zimby. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. All right. All mm -hmm. right. All right. We'll, we'll, yeah. yeah, we'll get into that for sure. But yeah, it was it was I definitely made some lifelong friends mm -hmm. through Angel Zimby, not only the folks who were involved in the Angel Zimby family directly, but outside in the whiskey world in general. You know, uh, there are now people who, because of that, because of Angels Envy, because of COVID, that, you know, the interaction through social media that I've never physically met, mm -hmm. and they're on the other side of the country or on the other side of the globe, but if we ever sat in a room, it's just like we never skipped a beat. Right, right, you gotta love that. <laughs> I mean, we met through Angels Envy, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> throw that out there, you know what I'm saying? Over a nice glass of whiskey. Mm -hmm. Adult, man, how many years were you Were you there? Uh, four. Four years, Yeah, Word. four years. Word. Yep. Word. that's crazy. Four yeah. great years. That's what's up, man, so now you, you moved on, and and you're doing dope things, you know what I'm saying? Back to the um, 
Uh, I don't know if you live in the vampire life again now. Late nights, uh, super kinda, late nights. Kinda. Like, there's, there's, there's definitely a little more balance. It's not so much like coming out and like seeing like the morning jogger saying good morning. I'm like, good morning, good night. Like, what are you talking about? Um, <laughs> right. So now you're you're heading up the cocktail program here at mm -hmm. Chicken and Whiskey along with four other spots. Yeah. So we're part of Star Restaurant Group. So we have Chicken and Whiskey, um, Doy Moy right across the street. Uh, we also have the Walrus Oyster and Ale House. We have two locations in National Harbor in Columbia. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a spot right next to our Columbia location called Walrus Roadside, uh, which is going to be like your boozy milkshakes, your burgers, your dogs from an you know, elevated level. Mm -hmm. um, and so I run the beverage program for all of it. Word. Yep. So um, do you have to split your time between those places? Right now, it's mostly concentrated here mm -hmm. and across the street at Doi Moy. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, over the next, you know, six months or so, it's going to be more like the overall picture. Okay. Um, and, but this is, this is, for me, this, this is, this is my baby. This is a uh, numero uno for me. So while we're at the top of this topic, you mentioned that you were with Angels Envy mm -hmm. when you opened up, when you helped open up this spot. Yeah. So, um... How'd that work out? Like, um, you know, did someone reach out to you, or did, did you, you know, were part owner, owner of the place? Or? No. So um, one of the owners, um, one of the partners of, uh, for our Star Restaurant Group, we met through a mutual friend. Okay. Uh, my friend calls me up and says, "Hey, I have a friend who's getting ready to open up this concept. I think you two should at least talk." Because I was working right down the street, and I was really kind of comfortable there. And I was kind of like, I was like, mm, "All right," because I know because you're a friend and you say he's he's a friend of yours. Great, we'll do that. Um, so you know, his name is Chris Carr. Mm -hmm. uh, and he actually has a really dope background in beverages as well, bartending um, in different scenes, especially up in New York. Uh, so we met and we came back here. And at the time, this was all dirt. This was dirt, that didn't exist, that wow. didn't exist, wow. this didn't exist. So we're sitting here in dirt and we're kind of like, we're kind of like asking each other questions the first time we met and it's kind of one of those things you're feeling each other out, you know, and and, and I told him, I said, look, I was like, I love what the, the direction we want to go with this. I was like, so I will do one night a week here. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's something that we start to see, like we work well with each other, like we're vibing. I'll go ahead and, and, and come over. And this uh, is as a bartender? As a bartender. Okay. Yeah, as a bartender. Um, and it started to happen. Uh, you know, I was back here, uh, you know, we really started to, to connect on a friendship and start to really, like, we would spend so many times just talking about, like, where we saw this space going, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, we see it as, as a mix of this and this and this, and, like, we wanted it to be this, like, great neighborhood whiskey bar that, you know, in the early parts of the week, you can come in, you can have your friends talk about whiskey, and then, you know, we never imagine like on a Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night that it would get to the level it's at now. Yeah. But there definitely been some times where we kind of like we would sit back here and be like, it happened. It did this? <laughs> like it happened, and it's it was it, it was uh, it was us. It was a great collection of folks who have been here, both past, present, um, that really kind of just helped set the tone for what this space. Uh, started off mm -hmm. and what it's going to be mm -hmm. um, and it was I was like I was blown away Tony's I being a little man. modest right? <laughs> so he's leaving out the fact that when you walk up to this place all you see is a Peruvian chicken spot mm -hmm. That's all you see. Now, even though it says chicken and whiskey on the top, right? So you walk in and you can get yuca. You can get the, the, the yellow sauce. Some, you know of the, some of the best. Straight up. Hands down. You know what I'm saying? Some chicken and you can sit down and eat. Little do you know that in the back, if you walk back there where it looks like it's supposed to be employees only, there's an entire whiskey bar back there. Yep. There's vinyl back here. <laughs> there's things happening back here and Tony's responsible for. It's, you know, it was, it was, yeah, you're right. So, you know, we do. We have, it, it's a, a great collection uh, of, of chicken, of yuca, of really just like a Latin, a very elevated Latin fast casual mm -hmm. uh, up front. And you come back here, back here, it's kind of like where we let our hair down a little bit. You know I mean? like, <laughs> yeah. Like to have a little bit of fun. Um, yeah. It's, and it's, it really is. And the reason why I say that we wear a lot of different hats back here is because one of our other, uh, one of our other partners, um, his name is Chuck. He used to go by DJ Dirty Hands. Mm -hmm. And that's where the music element comes in. So there's, there's three things that we take seriously back here. We take our whiskey seriously, we take our music seriously, we take our hospitality seriously. So whether it's on a Tuesday night and it's 20 people in here, or if it's a Friday night, it's 150 people in here. Yeah. Every single person that comes to this bar is going to feel like they're the only person in that room for that I love it. I love you it. Know? I love it. That's, that's all that matters. That was one of my questions. <laughs> you covered it. I love it, yo. 
I love that approach, man. You know what I'm saying? It's such a dope concept. So did you guys have like a speakeasy concept in your mind, but not completely a speakeasy? Did you think that? Well, or so, it just turned out that So way? with our door being, like you said, it looks like a freezer door, right? Yeah. So it's very unassuming. As a matter of fact, we used to always have people that would come in. I would, I would be sitting up front eating or what have you, and then they would come in and kind of have this disappointed look on their face. Where's the whiskey? Because they're like, exactly. Because they're like, <laughs> and around, I, like, I see the chicken, and they're like, oh, man, that's supposed to be whiskey here. And I was like, it's like Keep heading back and go to their freezer door. Keep walking, man. And then they open the door. They're like, ah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Keep walking, baby. And Keep that's, walking. And there, there are some nights too, and it still happens where you know there's a group, right? And there's like one or two people, and they've already been here, so they know. And they'll walk in, and the other friends are like, I'm not hungry. Why are we coming to a chicken joint, right? And they're like, No, just come on, just come on, just come, come on. on. And again, they open that door, and you see that one friend looking back at them, like, huh? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You figured it out. Uh huh. So yeah. this this menu, um, you know, my my um, my co-host here, you know, what I'm saying, for this segment, <laughs> had a couple questions about some of the titles, some of the, these cocktails. How did you come up with these titles? Where, where did this? So when we so when we started from from day one, we one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to have we wanted to have fun with the cocktail names, right? Like we didn't want it to be we wanted to really kind of poke fun at a bunch of different areas, pop culture, po you know, poke fun at ourselves sometimes, uh, poke fun at you know like you know every every kind of bar gets a certain kind of guest, right? Uh -huh. And so it was more so like you know it wasn't we weren't offending anybody, we we're just kind of bringing it to light, and just having some fun with it, because that, again that's you know can't take it too serious, take certain things seriously, but the overall picture, as long as you're enjoying yourself, that's all that matters. So we've had, you know, the, these names right now were uh, names that were created by some of the team that was here in the past and still here. Um, and these are just names that are just, you know, just it, like, like it did when you came in. It catches your eye. You know, you get that look right there. You're kind of like, uh, okay, uh, okay, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what? We can talk about the, we can talk about the Becky cocktail. Okay. Okay. Because oh, that actually, yeah. so there is a there is a there is a story about it. Um, we have personified Becky, like Becky is ours. She is she is an OG <laughs> to chicken and whiskey. Um, it's one of those things. When we first opened up, uh, you know, we we were gonna do a, a Tito's cocktail. And again, like we were just talking about, like how sometimes it's so basic to just get a Tito's and soda. And um, you know, one of our partners actually had a friend who really enjoyed just drinking Tito's and soda, and her name was Rebecca. And she was, you know, she's very well traveled. She's very, she has a very eclectic and interesting background. And so we were like, you know what? Like every time we put a Tito's cocktail on the menu, we're literally going to build this this adventure of this woman named Becky or Rebecca, just depending upon what cocktail iteration it was, right? So we've had like the Becky. Broad. We had, um, uh, you know, we've had like the by Rebecca, you know, and we've had so many different names. And in our mind, it's like, okay, this this fall, this winter, uh, you know, the spring, summer, Becky has gone and traveled. She's gone abroad. <laughs> uh, you know, we've, we've got the, the the next one, and, and I'll, I'll give you a little a little sneak peek. The next one is uh, a play on the infamous porn star Martini, so it's going to be called Becky's Only Fans. Because again, oh, now we're talking. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so I mean, it's it's just things like that, right? So like that's that, that that Becky cocktail is just you know Becky is ours. She's an OG to chicken and whiskey, and like we can't move forward without her. So like we we continue to follow the life of Becky. You know, that's dope. Uh, yeah, and all and all the other names are same. You know, same thing. It's they're just plays off of pop culture. Just plays off of references. We used to have one. Um, you know, if you remember, you've seen Tropic Thunder, right? Yes, sir. Tom Cruise's character. He's talking to Matthew McConaughey, and he's trying to get him to to, to leave uh, Ben Stiller as an agent. He's like. Look, he's like, you could be driving, he could find your own G5 player. <laughs> so we used, to have, we used to have a cocktail called G5 player. Like G5 you know, player, though. No, no. You know, it's just. It's Glass just, like that. Exactly. I love it. You know, I love it. Just have have fun. Uh, like you said, like it's, it. the art form itself is what's in the glass. But then with this, it's just like, let's just keep the vibes going. And here's the art thing that I was talking about. Super Soaker. Plantain. Plantain. Infused EW bourbon. Mm -hmm. Who's infusing bourbon with plantain? <laughs> this is a maniac. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Well, so this dope. one, so so the cocktails that you have up here right now, these are the ones that were created right before I came on. But okay. it was with the team that was with me from day one. Yeah. So it's still that understanding of we wanted to also, you know, because we have such great flavors exploding in front, we want to start translating them back here. Mm -hmm. You know, and like you said, like and also like incorporating them into whiskey cocktails. Like no one was thinking plantains and whiskey. You know, so it's like all right, how can we start to tie some of the more popular flavors 
up there and putting them on cocktails back here, kind of build a cohesive uh, brand in the front mm -hmm. and the back, even though we're tucked away, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's that's exactly, you know, what we've been doing and where we're going for sure. Okay. Answer your question? Yes, sir. <laughs> definitely, definitely, she definitely took a couple steps back when she looked at that menu. <laughs> you want to try this 126 proof? Are you good? Yeah. All right. So that was a good segue to this next question, right? So I'm going to preface this question with my own experience, my own fear. I want to make a milk punch at home so bad, but it seems okay. there's so many steps to it that I get intimidated as a non-bartender person. What's the most difficult uh, drink you've made at home? Ooh, at home. Outside of the White Claw gin thing that yeah, you did. That was difficult, too. So I'm like, I'm trying to take something from here and bring it up to here. You know, like, uh, That's pretty <laughs> difficult. Y'all would have stepped on my question, Tony. <laughs> All right, so actually, so, um, you know, when, when fat washing got really popular, right? Like, you mm -hmm. want to do, like, bacon fat or any kind of fat. I actually, you know, because I didn't jump, I was I was somebody in the very beginning when I started really kind of, like, taking, like, the, the art of, you know, like, the science of, of cocktails, like, seriously, right? I would, I'd have the books, and I was like, well, let me figure it out on my own first, and then I'll go to the books later, like, kind of thing. And it was, like, for some reason, it just gave me such problems. Because, like, I was like, I didn't understand. What it was. So I got to freeze it, then I got to take the fat cap, I got to punch the fat cap, but then what if I do with this? And I must, it was my house at certain points <laughs> smelled so much like bacon fat. Uh, it smelled like duck fat. It smelled just like everything. And for some reason, but then finally, I was like, all right, crack the book open, talk to some folks who I know who have done this before. Yeah. And finally not, like, nailed it down. I was like, all right, like, there it is. Okay. Mm. But for some reason, it was because it was messy. You know, you know, we know bacon, you cook bacon in your house, it's there for two weeks. To smell yeah, no yeah, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I, and I eat beef bacon and it cooks just like pork bacon. Yeah, it's fatty. A, yeah, anything. So fat washing was like the the first thing that really, really, really gave me issues. Mm. And I don't. And looking back, and I'm like, if I'd have just opened the damn book the first time. Right, right. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know. I need to try. I need to make that step. Take that step because I love milk punch. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't find it in a lot of places in the DMV that I've experienced. And I just want to make some at home. I, I've made the um, what is it, the Christmas drink? The um, Eggnog. I made eggnog. eggnog, you know what I mean, from scratch. I have to give you Asian. my coquito re recipe. Please. I saw that <laughs> on, your, on, your, on your gram, right? Yep. Yeah, I was yep. like, look at that there. <laughs> so, yeah, please do. Um, I'll, I'll definitely try it mm -hmm. and everything. But then the experimentation is dope because you end up coming with dope things and you make it your own eventually. Exactly. Or playing around with yeah. it. Yeah. That's what, that's, what, that's what I did with the coquito recipe. Just took it, uh, took the family recipe, kind of tweaked it a little bit, you know, and I was like, well, I want to actually, I like whiskey, so I want to incorporate rum and whiskey. Yeah. And then like play with a couple other little flavors and oh yeah. Yeah. So did you ever imagine imagine the service industry um, putting you in a position to meet so many amazing people and travel to so many places? Absolutely not. Right. Absolutely not. And and I'm gonna tell you exactly why. And this was this was influence from those around me, right? They were people, friends of mine who were not in this business. Mm. Um, even I, in full transparency, even my own family. Like mm -hmm. even though my mom and my and my pops, you know, their uncle their grandfathers, their fathers, whatever they were in the business. When I told them I was going in to do this as a career, you know, I, I got kind of the side eye, mm -hmm. like, you know, because they just didn't understand. You're, you're being a bartender. Exactly. Right? They, just, they didn't understand there's so much more to it. And same thing with some, you know, with, with some of my friends uh, as well. They were like, you're going to do what? I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And in and, and that same vein, it was the more I got into it and the, the, the more I really respected it and also to working with some phenomenal people over the years who actually took the time invested in me to give me those opportunities like you said to, to meet so many people yeah. and to really all start to have the opportunity to travel all in the name of like cocktails and hospitality and beverage yeah. you know I think that's the one thing too that is still in the general eye is like still not respected as much as it should be which is yeah. this is a career is a lifestyle yeah. And it can provide so many opportunities, you know, and people just don't look at that. Some people don't look at it that way and they that's, need to. That's the whole thing. That's whiskey and kicks, right? Exactly. What we're trying to do is trying to bring to you the blood, sweat and tears, the math and the science behind your favorite spirits and cocktails. Yep. It's a lot that goes into these things, man, yeah. into this bottle or into, you know, uh, Becky abroad and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> like people put thought and effort into those things. And um, it's just more than just pouring, you know, 
you know, the, the little bottle with the extra vodka and, yep. you know, and the splash of cranberry, some ice. And but like, look, if somebody, the other thing too is if somebody just wants a vodka soda, vodka cranberry, great. That's fine. It's, it's absolutely fine. And, and if you, you know, the more you talk to, to people who are in the hospitality business, you start to realize there are some of the most interesting people in the world. Just like mm-hmm. their backgrounds, experiences, like they didn't start out this way. They used to do, they, I got a matter of fact, I have a PhD, I have this. Like there's just, there's so many interesting people in this business. It's and crazy. continue to have that opportunity to meet them, you know, through travel and the name of you know, now whiskey and then beverages, like it doesn't get any better than that. No doubt, no <laughs> doubt, man. No, I'm getting to sip whiskey the whole time. Mm-hmm. So what are we gonna pour, man? What's this last All pour? Right. So let me get ready to close out. This last one is Amarut Fusion. It's a single malt whiskey from India. Oh, yeah. Oh. Somebody just posted a whiskey from India on my Instagram feed. I figured we'd have a little, a little fun traveling around a little bit. Yes, sir. I am highly appreciative. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Anyone knows that? Yes, it's a different world coming from mm-hmm. wine to this whiskey, this yeah. whiskey world. You can you can taste it if you want to. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, okay. Yeah. It smells good. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Wow, that's crazy. It's dancing a little bit for sure. That's dangerous because <laughs> that 100 proof does not show up at all. Exactly. I wasn't. At all, I was going to turn it away so you didn't see the proof, mm-hmm. and then tell you because it, compared to this, right? This lets you know. Like, yes. It's, it's. I'm stick with you. This one, you're like, I'm here, but then it's like. It fades off a little bit, and that's not a bad thing. I am so on the edge of saying someone lied <laughs> about this 50% alcohol by, by volume. Wow, man, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Whoa. India. India. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's in the Scotch family. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's a single malt whiskey, um, and, and, they, and they spell whiskey without the E. So, you know, they, they say, hey, we're, we're Scottish. <laughs> 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 Very nice, man. This, mm-hmm. this is nice, man. appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, you know? This is not something, this is a personal stash, right? No, so we also, we had this here. Okay. Yeah, so so a part of our our philosophy with our whiskey selection is, you know, we'll have a couple of the, 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 the big players, right? Mm-hmm. The ones that, but we also didn't want to be kind of just like your grandfather's know, typical whiskey selection. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I we know. have it. Like we have it broken down. So we have it. They're broken down by a rye, American, international, and bourbon. Um, and we try to really go out and you know. And when I say find like the rare ones or like the unique ones, it's not. We're not talking about chasing all the pappies. You know, because yeah. that's like that's that's got its own separate category. Right. You know, it's more so like we used to have one where it was a, it was like a black truffle rye. Like finding these ones that have unique flavors where it's like might we might only be able to get a couple bottles. Yeah. You know, and it's not so much expensive. It's more so just about seeing what's out there. Yeah. You know, case you know case in point, drinking this right here. No doubt. This is crazy. Very nice. And the Selection, dude. The way you, the way you. Uh, what do they say about um, albums? You sequence an album, right? Songs in a certain order. Mm-hmm. So sequencing these whiskeys was pretty masterful. I appreciate. It. No, normally, what I would have done is I would have saved this for last. But I. That's knew, what I would have done. But I knew with this one, even at a hundred proof, I knew it, it wasn't. We weren't going to throw our plat- palettes off too much. You know. Amazing hats <laughs> off to the sequencing. <laughs> I'm very impressed because you don't follow this with too much, with too many things. No, like, like this. This is this is the end of the night. This is yeah. like, you know, goodbye. See, that's, that's, that's when it just changes your night. Mm-hmm. But what you didn't realize is that when you had this earlier on, this actually changed your night. <laughs> this is 100 proof. Um, what's your relationship with sneakers, man? Ooh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, okay. All right, so there, there is 90% of the time you will always find me wearing either Chucks or Vans. Yes. For the simple reason that one for me they're comfortable, they're yep. super comfortable. I love the custom, the customize my my shoes yep. as well. But then also too, like it's just I don't know, there's just something about like just especially Chucks, right? I remember having the Chucks when I was little, and then mm-hmm. like just kind of like the rebirth <laughs> yeah. of, of the brand, you know, over the last like 20 years or so. And it's just that's for me, it's just you can catch me rocking the streets and my Chucks and my yeah. Vans, man. Yeah, uh, you know, and the ones I actually have on now are the ones. So these are these are the ones that were you know made from all recycled materials. Yeah, we gotta get some, some we gotta get footage of those. That's crazy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, those are crazy. Alright man, we uh you know cameras man. Camera shit. Hey, it is 
<laughs> so it's real life. And, yeah, right. And all of a sudden, I'm by myself. You know what I'm saying? She had to go move her car and all that other good stuff. We in D.C. Nobody wants tickets. But yeah, man, your sneaker game, you know, one fault of mine is when I sit down with bartenders and people in the entry, we get so much into the whiskey, and you guys get me, I'm blaming y'all. <laughs> y'all get me tipsy to the point I forget to ask about the sneakers. So I'm glad I didn't do that because you're, you're a bit of a sneaker junkie just like I am. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things, too, where, and, you know, I got some friends that are way more sneakerheads than I am. So I'm kind of more, like, low-key. Like, yeah. I, I still enjoy a city. It's Chucks or Vans, and, and, you know, also my wife's the same way. Mm -hmm. My wife, she loves her Chucks. She loves her Vans. Okay. And for me, like, it is Same family. Yeah. Chucks and Vans. Same exactly. family. Exactly. You know, it's it's the same family, but, you know, you know. Like I said, Chucks also, we said before, like, it's the more beat up your Chucks are, it's like a, it's like a badge of honor. You know what I mean? Because, like, they, they, yeah. they stand the test of time, and you keep rocking with them and keep rolling, and then the same, the Vans are the same way. But, yeah, uh, I definitely, it's one of those things, and I, I never really kind of talk too much about it. It's one of those, like, I'll come in or wag, and like, yo. Like, I yeah. really like those. I'm like, yeah. I yeah. appreciate it. Them shits you got on today is crazy. <laughs> I've never seen these before. And I'm over here like, yo, those are nuts. That's really dope, man. Um, let me ask you this last question, man. We're going to get ready to roll out of here. What would you, uh, you ever think about what you want your legacy to be? Uh, yeah, I have actually. Um, in regards to this business, I want my legacy to be something that was given to me, right? So like I said before, I had the opportunity to be taught by a lot of great people in this business that did everything from shop beers, craft cocktails, elevated mm -hmm. cocktails. The legacy that I want is for anybody who I have a chance to interact with, who I have a chance to work with, I want them to have those same opportunities, if not more, and move forward. And hopefully mm -hmm. somewhere down the line they say, hey, I remember working with Tony or I had an opportunity to really sit down and talk with Tony and that really kind of impacted my life. Whether it was the high hospitality business or maybe they took it and approached into something else yeah um, that's that's what I want for my legacy and, and then also for my family you know I want the same thing for my family for our son like if if I would definitely want our son to work in this business at some point because there are just certain lessons you can't get anywhere else right um, you know but if he decides to do something else great but like I want him to also look at this uh, you know with that lens of like this is a serious business this right. is a lifestyle if you want it right There's a lot of opportunities that are there for you as long as you take the right approach right yeah. that's, that's dope man yeah. you know one thing about and this let me give you a couple flowers here is that you've done a good job with showing your son uh, what it means to um, pursue your, like pursue your uh, passion Right, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, at, at the bare minimum, he has that at least. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, look, you know, yeah. Well, you know, you you love to watch people shovel driveways, and you want to shovel driveways. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. But but you know, pursue that passion, man, yeah. because you know society taught us that success looks like this. Yes. You know, 100%. and 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 Absolutely. kudos to you for breaking that mold and say, no, nah, boom. You know what I'm saying? This is this is what success looks like for me, and I'm able to provide for my family. With that. Yeah, and it's just, it's it's you know one simple quick line. It's it's do the good, be the good, the rest will follow. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> you know. Cheers to that, man. Cheers Absolutely. to that. Tony, you're a good dude, man. I appreciate um, it. You know, great energy, great personality, you guys. Come here to chicken and whiskey. You know, even if Tony's not here, still come here and check it out because it's so dope. It's yeah. way darker than this at <laughs> night. Uh, the vibe is really dope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, definitely check out Tony Berg, man, because um, you've been a straight up dude from the beginning. Even when we um, were just saying, hey, man, we got to do something. We got to do something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And from the time we met up until now, man, I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate your skill set. I Thank appreciate you. your intellect and your approach to um, just life in general and definitely what you do in this in this industry so so I appreciate I'm, that, I'm here for it man anything you need from me if I can provide I will you know what I'm saying just holler at me son absolutely you know we'll keep so? it going yeah no doubt man you want to tell the people where to find you anything like that? yeah so uh, on Instagram you can find me at TV whiskey um, you know you can always find me here at chicken and whiskey uh, funny enough you know pretty much any day of the week um, but other than that I'll be around I'll be around this block for a minute my dude Tony Burke man appreciate it man appreciate you thank you and that's a wrap.